you're here basically right you live here you're most of the, of the time yeah now. yeah really um, i guess yeah yeah i integrated yeah i mean obviously it's pretty much based on money the system here it is yeah. the system is completely based on money yeah uh the studio system yeah uh to a degree i think the way i hook into the system is based on money is there a collective uh, ethos or um, somebody once said my problem was I didn't understand the social contract yeah I now understand what that means yeah do you understand it the social contract yeah. I, th I think I do yeah what uh, is it for you uh, the social contract you can't get mad mm -hmm. you can't get mad you can't let it get you because you have to have you have to make a deal with everyone else and it's almost unspoken that you are going to be fucked over at some point by people who you may have done something nice for mm. and it may happen that by circumstance or even very purposefully that you fuck someone over but that shouldn't get in the way of you being able to sit down and have fun with them <laughs> Am I on the right track? You, you can't build a resentment about it. Mm -hmm. You have to still try and love those people. Yeah. Because that's the way they're thinking. Because it ain't personal. No, it's not personal. They don't really mean to hurt you. No. Not really. I don't quite understand. Well, I mean, there's a lot of motivations for why it sure. happens. Yes, many. I mean, money will make you do stuff as well, won't it? I mean, yes. one, them, us, yes. you know. Yeah, well, yeah. whoever. If, if there's many millions riding on a decision it's hard to be philosophical yes yeah, yeah very very hard very hard to be you know you, <laughs> you have to choose what level of integrity you're coming in at and okay uh, and i've often felt it i've sat there and i have felt the knife slipped firmly in between my shoulder blades and tried to have it shoved through the other side through my heart i mean this is a bizarre place um and it doesn't take very long, if, if, and I'm sure you've experienced this if you've stayed here for any length of time. You come in, you're fresh from the outside, you're off the boat from the farm, still got shit on your shoes, you're in here, people are charmed by that, mm. that you've still got shit on your shoes. Uh, they're charmed by the fresh approach you bring to it, and that's a real thing. Mm -hmm. But they're also stroking the shit out of you, you know, mm -hmm. licking you all over it. And that's kind of good for you too. It's great. But it doesn't take very long before you realize, or before it gets to you. It's cascading on you all the time. You can't get away from certain attitudes, from certain modes of behavior that this town and the industry dictate. And no matter how strong you are when you come in off the farm mm. with those convictions and, those, and a certain line of attack, no matter how strong you are, you are going to be affected by this place. His whole um, uh, opinion about women on film from beginning to end is very brief. He says, women on film, either naked or dead. Both is better. Mm. And it's like, whoa, mm -hmm. whoa. The man is, has got a spiritual malady for a start. Mm -hmm. I mean. <laughs> The scary thing is that I think a lot of people think that. Mm. Maybe not to that extreme. Mm. <clears throat> there are people, well-meaning people, and you'll know mm. within 15 minutes. If this is a person you want to work with. Mm -hmm. yeah. Christopher Walken, the first time I ever did a casting session in America, yeah. terrified me. Me too. I mean, I, fucking hell, I came I, to meet the guy. They said, oh, he's flying, he's flying in from God knows where. Yeah, but he miles. didn't need a plane, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> he didn't need a plane. He came in, he was doing all the kind of Scorsese oh. stuff. And I said, have you had a chance to read the script? And he looked at me and he said, do you like my face? And I went, yes. And he said, but well, that's fucking great. Because if you don't get uh, De Niro, fuck you, I'm out of here. And we stood up and walked out. And everyone said, well, that I think was quite a good meeting. No, he came to see me on a rooftop in New York. I said, hey, can I, can I talk to you? And he said, sure. He, he floated in. Mm -hmm sideways mm. through a crowd of people he was wearing black and it was like one of those old vampire movies where they don't walk but they glide mm. and he was a dancer you know so he has yeah, very yeah. 
he's very um, um, you know graceful yeah and he moved sideways and he just sat down in a chair next to me and it kind of frightened me mm. um, and he's a very smart guy mm -hmm. and we started talking and I didn't you know say much of anything about reading the script nothing I just started talking about the Middle Ages and, mm. and he um, and he began to talk tortures and we swapped tortures because I'd read this book on torture mm -hmm. and and I I tried to recall some of the most heinous things I'd ever read in this book and and he was like oh oh and he'd try and top it <laughs> and it, it got and my assistant was there and he left because he he couldn't stand it anymore yeah. the, the air had turned cold mm -hmm. and then he left and I I wanted to leave <laughs> and because I knew that I didn't want to work with him yeah. and he was getting scary yeah and then i turned around and it was on top of the peninsula hotel i turned around to avoid his steady gaze at one point yeah. and i was looking at a building with the top of the sixes on it so there was a huge illuminated triple six, six in red yeah. and i went from that to that to that and he, st he started smiling and i thought oh no chris walken is the antichrist yeah. you know <laughs> i'll think Walking, right? and for and you'll resent it for a little while mm. then you have to let it go otherwise you'll you'll eat yourself alive mm. and I think it takes that kind of cockroach resilience to survive in this town when I came over here I was oh God I was in my my uh, mid-20s right the first time I really came over here you know I had a whole bunch of weird paranoid suspicions about what the hell was going on because there was a lot of stuff I couldn't understand right um, and nobody was really bothering to explain it to me. They don't. <clears throat> and it, it, and I formed a bunch of opinions about the town and about the people in it that were like, surely that couldn't be because a whole place can't be like, you know, weird town, you know, where the stranger wanders in and and all the people are in the bar and they all shut up when he looks at him and, mm -hmm. and they tell you don't go into the house on the hill and it's like that mm -hmm. and then you go away and you think no that's i was wrong i mean that's insane thinking i'm paranoid i imagined that stuff that couldn't be the reason for why so and so was acting like could it mm -hmm. and then you find out later on the track that you are exactly on track mm -hmm. with a lot of this stuff not specifically on no. track but that you could, uh, that some of your worst nightmares were real at the time, and you think, oh. mm -hmm. now this is what I mean by actually starting to swim up or downstream with the rest of the salmon, mm -hmm. you know, eventually, if you stay here long enough, yeah. you'll find yourself doing that. Um, and you have to, there's a way of doing it without doing it. Mm -hmm. and that takes time. Mm -hmm. uh, and it takes relaxation. Mm. Not being uncomfortable about... Not being uncomfortable. Realizing it for what it is. Projecting. And understanding what it is. Once you understand it, well then you're not afraid of it anymore. Mm -hmm. So you can just walk around it and through it. And, mm -hmm. and then get on with what you tried to get on with in the first place. A place like this can humiliate you. Mm -hmm. And it can be... It can either... It can humiliate you, it can be humbling. I mean, it does rip your life to pieces. Is it? If you'll let it. Yeah. And it's always pounding at the walls. It's yeah. like these little guys, these little heathens with no soul downstairs with horns on their head with a battering ram trying to like beat your walls in. <laughs>